Hi, this is Ms. Black, Bossier Parish Community College. We are in open campus. We are in module seven, and this is video two. We are still factoring today, and we're still working on trinomials. But you're going to notice today these trinomials are different than the ones we did in the previous lesson. Remember, a trinomial still means three terms. And when we factor a trinomial, we still will always factor it into two binomial expressions, two sets of parentheses. So let's go to the board and see what's different today. OK, let's recall. Last time we left off, we were factoring trinomial expressions, three terms. And we said they had to be in descending order. So if I have x squared minus x minus 6, that's a trinomial in descending order. We said it will always factor into two parentheses. Now the pattern to factor is always the same. We start with the first term. What's the only thing that multiply to x squared? x times x. And if you remember, I called that an easy trinomial because that's easy. There's only one option there. After we go to the first term, then we go to the last. What can multiply to 6? And remember, we have some options for 6. You're either 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. To decide which option you use, you read the trinomial backwards. I want to multiply to 6 and subtract to the number we see there. The number in front of the x is understood to be a 1. So, what multiplies to 6 and will subtract to 1? Can it be 1 and 6? No, that will subtract to 5. Can it be 2 and 3? Yes, 2 and 3 will subtract to 1. We talked about getting the symbols. Subtract means the symbols have to be one of each different. If you want to subtract to make a negative 1, this negative belongs to the larger number. Negative 3 plus 2 would subtract to negative 1. So that is the pattern to factor trinomials. Now what's going to happen in this lesson is you're not going to hear me call these easy trinomials. I'm going to call these difficult. And you're going to see why. Here is my trinomial in my notes. This is example 3. And it's still a trinomial. It still has three terms. It is still got to be in descending order the factor, which it is. The problem is I'm not going to call this one easy because it doesn't just start out as x squared. To factor a trinomial, you always start with the first term, and that's a 5x squared. So that makes this trinomial a little bit trickier. I will call this a difficult trinomial. Now, there are two different methods to factor a difficult trinomial. I'm going to show you both, and then you need to decide which method you choose to use. It's your preference. Okay. The way I like to factor a difficult trinomial is I like to think of it as a puzzle, and I want to fit the pieces together. So to factor a trinomial, we still are going to put two sets of parentheses. The answer is still going to be binomials. I'm still going to start with the first term. But now, what in math can multiply to make a 5x squared? Well, 5 is 5 times 1. And x squared is x times x. So to multiply to make a 5x squared, you have 5x times 1x. Or we could just say 5x times x. We're still going to do what we did the last time. To factor trinomial, I'm going to go to the last term. I'm still going to write my options of what can multiply to 6. 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Here's where you have to do something a little bit differently. You still want to subtract, and you still want to make the number in the middle, which is 1. But it's not these numbers that subtract to 1. It's going to be the outers and the inners that subtract to 1. You're actually going to have to play around like a puzzle. And to figure out which set of numbers we're going to use, we're going to have to put them in and see if they fit. 
we're going to have to check this by using foil. So, I know what you're all are thinking. You're saying, oh, it's going to be the two and three, because two and three subtract to one. I'm going to show you that that doesn't work. If you put the two here and the three here, it has got to be the outers and the inners that make the one X. Well, here are your outers. 5X times 3 is 15X. Here are your inners. 2 times X is 2X. Well, this outer 15X and this inner 2X subtract to make a 1. No, it will not. So now what you're going to do is going to switch these numbers because, look, these are not both X's. They're not alike. So by switching these numbers, you will get different inner and outer terms. So now if I switch the 2 and the 3, watch what happens with the outers and inners. The outers now are 5x times 2, which is 10x, and the inners are 3 times x, which is 3x. Again, the only way if I know this is right is to check. Will the outers and the inners make this middle? No, they will not. 10x, 3x, do not subtract to make 1x. So I'm sorry, the 2 and 3 do not work. So now you've got to play with the 1 and the 6. Okay, it's all about the outers and the inners. So here we go. i got a 1 and a 6. It's playing a game. It's like putting a puzzle. If I put the 1 here and the 6 here, Will that work? Let me check the outers and inners. 5x times 6 is 30x. 1 times x is 1x. Will 30x the outers and 1x the inners subtract to make a 1x? No. So now you have to switch the numbers. You may have them in the wrong position. So if we put the 6 here and the 1 here, Let's see if that works. Now the outers are 5x times 1, which is 5x. The inners are 6 times 1, which is 6x. Let's check. Do the outers and the inners make the middle? 5x and 6x. If you subtract them, will you get a 1x? Yes. So now we know we have our correct numbers in the correct position. It's like doing a puzzle. The last part of the puzzle is getting the signs. Subtract still means the signs have to be different. The sign in the middle still goes to who's larger. But when you talk about the larger, you're not looking at the actual numbers. You're looking at the outers and the inners. Who is larger, 6x or 5x? 6x is. So the 6 would get the negative because that makes the 6x. So that means the 5x would have to be positive. The 1 makes the 5x. And that is your correct factored form of that trinomial. Now, some people don't like that method. They don't like trial and error putting the pieces together. They want a procedure to follow. So again, it's my job to give you options. There is another way to factor a difficult trinomial doing a procedure. And it will use what you learned previous lesson on grouping. So we're going to try this one more time. Okay. So my expression was 5x squared minus x minus 6. I know by looking at it, it's a trinomial, three terms. I knew by looking at it, it's a little bit harder because of this 5. So another way to factor a difficult trinomial is to do the grouping method. But you can't group with three terms. Remember, grouping means two by two. So you need four terms to do grouping. I'm going to show you how you get the four terms. So to do this by grouping, the first step is to multiply the first and the last. So we're going to multiply. 5 times 6. We're not going to look at that sign yet. Just multiply 5 times 6. So we're going to multiply the numbers of the first and the last. 5 times 6 is 30. And what we're going to do is we're going to list every option we know that multiplies to 30. So 30 could be 
1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 5 and 6. Now, how do we decide between these four options? We still read. I want to subtract to make the 1x. So I need the 1. Will 1 and 30 subtract to 1? No. Will 2 and 15 subtract to 1? No. Will 3 and 10 subtract to 1? No. Will 5 and 6 subtract to 1? Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this. Once we get our numbers, we are now in step 2, going to rewrite our expression to have four terms. So we're going to leave the first term, 5x squared. We're going to leave the last term, negative 6. We are technically replacing this, negative x, that middle term with two terms. Because to make a negative x, you would need a 6x and a 5x. And we're going to subtract them, which means they're going to be different signs. And this negative means the 6. And the 5 would have to be positive. So what you've done is you replaced this negative x with two terms that mean the same thing. Negative 6x plus 5x would be negative x. Once you add those four terms, now you can use that other rule of factory learn, which was called grouping. Where you group the first two terms and the last two terms, and you pull out what they each have in common. So these two terms each have an x in common. And then you would be left with 5x minus 6. These two terms don't have anything in common. So the only thing we could divide them by is positive 1. And it would still say 5x minus 6. If you remember when we did grouping in the previous module, to do grouping correctly, these parentheses have to be identical. They are identical. So you write that parentheses down, 5x minus 6, and then what you pulled out, the GCFs, would go in the other parentheses. If you look, that's the same result I got a minute ago by doing factoring by FOIL, thinking backwards. So when you're factoring a difficult trinomial, Pretty much it's up to you guys which method you prefer. Thinking backwards, thinking about FOIL, or doing a standard grouping. Let's try one more in the class notes and see if we get it. So let's look at example two. You have seven X squared plus 5x minus 2. We are factoring a trinomial and we know it's difficult because 7 is in the, in the beginning. That's a problem. I like to do it by thinking like puzzle pieces. So I know to factor a trinomial you always put two parentheses. I know when you factor a trinomial you always start with the first term. What can multiply to 7x squared? That's 7x times x and that's it. No other option. After you look at the first term, then you go to the last. I say to myself, what can multiply to 2? 1 and 2 are my only option. So now the problem is getting those numbers 1 and 2 in the correct spot. If I try the 1 here and the 2 here, the only way I know if it's right is by checking the outers and the inners. It's the outers and the inners that make the middle. So my outers now are... 14x. My inners are 1x. Now I'm going to read. Does 14x and 1x subtract to 5x? No. What does that tell me? It tells me my numbers are in the wrong position. So now I'm going to switch them. I'm going to put the 2 here and the 1 here. I'm going to check my outers and inners again. 7x times 1 is 7x. 2 times x is 2x. I'm going to read. Do my outers and my inners subtract to make the middle? Yes, they do. 7x and 2x would subtract to 5x. So I got everybody in the right spot. Now it's symbols. Subtract means the symbols have to be different. The sign in the middle goes to who's larger. Who's larger? 2x or 7x? 
Seven X is larger. It's got to be positive. It's got to be the sign in the middle. The two X has got to be negative. So if you follow the loop, this loop makes the seven, so the one is positive. This loop makes the two X, so the two is negative. If you don't like that method, you can do the other method, which is grouping. So again, to show you grouping, the first thing you would do is take these two numbers and multiply them. So you would set 7 times 2 is 14. You would list your options for 14. 1 and 14, 2 and 7. You would decide on which option, again, according to the middle. You want to subtract to make 5. 1 and 14 will not subtract to make 5. 2 and 7 will. So what you're going to do is you're going to rewrite this. Instead of having three terms, you're going to have four. You'll keep the first, 7x squared. You'll keep the last, negative 2. You are replacing this 5x with these. How do you make a 5x? You take a 7x, and then you take a 2x, and you want to subtract them. And subtract means these have to be different signs. The sign in the larger in the middle goes to the larger, 7 is positive, 2 is negative. Now you've made four terms. Now you can do that grouping. What do these have in common, these two terms? 7x, and you'll have left over x plus 1. What do these terms have in common? It's not just a 2, it has a negative 2. And when you divide by a negative 2, you'll get x. And when you divide by negative 2, you get positive 1. Remember, you did grouping correctly because these parentheses are the same. So you write that parentheses x plus 1, what they have in common. And then the other parentheses, you write what's left over, what you pulled out, the GCF. Now, remember, if you write this as the answer factored, and I write this as the answer factored, they're the same answer. We both add the 7x minus 2. We both have the x plus 1. It doesn't matter what order the parentheses are in because it's connected by multiplication. There's no easy way to do this. It's just going to take practice. This is probably the hardest rule of factoring. It's factoring a trinomial that starts out with a coefficient that's not just a 1. So just don't get frustrated. Just keep practicing. Thank you.